G'day, this is Steve, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop and welcome to the workbench. Today what I'm going to do is make a picture frame, but instead of boring and stupid watching me make the entire frame, I'll show you how I'm going to make the moulding, then I'll make the frame, then I'll put it together and show you what's involved. Very, very simple and what I'm going to do is use three planes. That's a rebate plane and a set of round and hollows. These are number sixes. These planes, by the way, they're H&T Gordon. Beautiful Australian handmade planes. And the marking gauge I use is a Colin Clinton cutting gauge, which is also available from the H&T Gordon website. Check them out. All right, <clears throat> you'll notice I do have some other marking gauges on the bench. And the reason for that is this profile I'm going to make now, I want to actually transpose onto the frame that I'm going to be making. So I'm going to keep the measurements I use on these gauges so I can transfer them. Normally, if I'm just making one, that's all I'd use, It'd be just one cutting gauge. And this little hammer, by the way, is for adjusting the plane. So if I want a coarse cut or a fine cut, or actually take the blades out and sharpen them. Hopefully I won't have to do that this time because I've already sharpened them and they're nice and sharp. Okay, got a screwdriver gun. Could use a screwdriver by itself if you're a purist. And what I've got here in front of me, this is called a sticking board. And it's got a flat platform with a fence. It's about 1.8. The reason I've made this one, and this is in the workshop, is because it allows me to do all the moulding I need for a 900mm wide cabinet or a 3 foot wide cabinet. This is a pretty complex sticking board, but it suits my purpose. However, the one I use in Room for Woodwork, which is the other show that I have with a woodworking bench in the corner of a bedroom, the one I use is far simpler. And if you'd like to check out Room for Woodwork, you'll see that in coming up videos. So how do we use this? The frame that I'm going to be making, by the way, is for this photo here. And if you like that cabinet, it's for sale currently for 1.5 million Australian. And honestly, it is the most extraordinary cabinet I've seen in modern day. If you'd like to go for a tour for the cabinet, there's a link in the description below this video and it'll blow your mind. It really is a true testament to the man who made it. And Jeffrey Hanna, uh, I'm happy to say, he's been a friend of mine for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. He's my mentor. He got me started on fine furniture. And on top of that, he's a heck of a nice bloke. So Jeff, if you're watching, you owe me a coffee. But instead of making just a normal frame where I could have used a router and whatever, I thought, no, this deserves more, so I'm gonna make this by hand. Interestingly enough, H&T Gordon that make these planes and Jeff Hanna live about 20 kilometres away from each other. So, small world. So obviously when we're putting a picture frame in, we've got glass, we've got backing, we've got paper and we've got the item we're framing and so we have to cut a rebate. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut a rebate on the underneath inside edge in order to find out what distance I want. There's not much distance between the corner of the cabinet here and the edge of the paper. So I don't want a frame to come over this far. I just want it to come in to cover this edge, but also to allow this to be seen. So I've set a marking gauge up and that's the width of the rebate I'm going to do. Now, as far as the depth, the depth of the rebate has to take into account the glass, how thick it is, the backing board you're going to put on there, the article you're framing, whether it's a canvas, whether it's a photo, what have you, and also make allowance for however you're going to fit, fix the back pieces all together. I'm going to be using push pins, which are glazier pins, and all up I've worked out I need 10 mil. Whatever this distance is, and then mark that. Mark it over the ends. So now you can see I'm coming in that far and down that much. Now when it comes to fitting the 
piece of timber we're going to do to the sticking board, you'll notice I've got a screw on this end. I push it up against there with a hammer, give it a little tap, and then another screw I place right up against the back of it, like that. So now I've got support at the back and support either end. Not going to move, it's supported at the fence at the back. It's got a screw this end and a screw this end. And I'm going to use the rebate plane to cut the rebate for the frame and everything to fit in. I've got a mark and line there and how I get the rebate started. This, by the way, is just linseed oil on some wadding and you just rub it on the bottom of your plane like that and it really helps it move along. Now I get the corner of the plane here and insert it into this cut line that my marking gauge has left. Tilt it at about 45 degrees and you just follow that line down. At the start, you don't get much. As you can see, there's little shavings, but nothing huge. There's another one there. Do that a few times. And each time you pass, bring it up a little bit steeper than the pass before. The goal with this technique is to gradually bring the plane from this angle up to here, so then you're taking a full width of the rebate. And it gives you a fence to work on. I will warn you though, if you're cranky, if you're in a hurry or you feel under pressure, don't bother doing this because this requires you to be relaxed, in the mood and, I don't know, in the zen of woodworking, I suppose. And now you can see we're starting to get a nice full shaving. And pretty soon we'll have a full width shaving. Now as we flatten out, it also is giving us a nice little edge there, which acts as a fence for your plane to run on. And then when you're getting the full width shaving like that, I've just increased the depth of cut and you'll hear it when I do the next plane. And you hear it's a much more bassier note and we're we'll doing another one. It's a much thicker shaving coming off. Once you find the plane starting to stick a little bit, grab the linseed, bit of a rub, and we're back in business. I know you can't feel the difference, but boy, I can. We're getting very close to that line now. I'm going to be another three passes and we'll be there. One. Two. Three. If you look at that, we're right down to the line. Now, obviously, if you've got a table saw, you could do exactly the same process on a table saw. If you've got a router, you could use a router. But basically this is about hand tools this video, not machines. But it is possible. Also, which I'll do in another video, is you could use a plough plane. And yes, it's a lot quicker, but to me, I don't know, this is a love job and I'm enjoying the process. And it really gets you more in touch with the wood you're working with. And chefs talk about putting love into the food. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I believe what you're doing with hand tools, you're actually putting love into your job as well. Okay, so that's the rebate. 